So welcome back to another episode of the World Community League. I guess we'd just call this the Managers Forum or the, the Public Forum at, at this point, Dazza. Uh, back again with me, we've also got Dazza and Chip and B, and we're joined by two new fresh faces from the manager circle as well, guys that have been kicking ass and taking names. It's everyone's favourite whale, McBride, and we've got Young Eon with us as well. Thanks for joining us, lads. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. And Dazza, how are we getting on, buddy? Uh, we're okay. It's it's all over, so we can uh, relax now until possibly January. But um, you know, it, it finished, and um, managers obviously won their divisions. Um, that's why Young Ian McBride are with us. They picked up wins. Uh, a couple of others couldn't join, but um, you know, I'm quite relieved it's over. I don't have to uh, check a million messages each week, but um, it was good fun. Uh, obviously, it's sort of brought people together that hadn't spoken before um it's proven that maybe having the limiteds involved sort of opened it up to more managers because without that that would have been a, a bit of a stumbling block and then now we're looking at maybe a second attempt uh after christmas around christmas sort of at that time once the world cup's out of the way um maybe to discuss today uh how we're going to do it, what the structure is going to look like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, what platform it could be on. Um, so yeah, there's lots to uh, have a chat about. But um, I think you should pass over to the two league winners and uh, get some of their feedback. I think we'll probably start with Youngie just because he's probably the most unfamiliar to anyone who's catching the video today. So Youngie, if, just for anyone catching this who's not up to speed with your account, and that, if you can just give us a wee bit of background and then how you've done in the World Community League, buddy. Um, so my background, I joined November 2020, so I've been on quite a while. Um, I still, I didn't put the big bucks in at the beginning, regress it massively as uh, as you do. Um, but my gallery is is quite large in terms of the amount of players. I've got like over 300 players. It's about a 10 ETH gallery, but um, just from what Dazza was saying, letting the limiteds in, that's, that's the key to me winning my league is because I've got so many players, I could really hone in on the on the matches each week. So because I'm not like key under 23, a 10th gallery, what's that going to really get you? A handful of decent under 23s. But because I go in Asia, so I can pick the Asia players, but I've got like the Sassinia Limited, Shin Limited, like a mix them with my rares and go against the lineups uh, that's out that week. That was really key for me, for my, for me to win that league. If it would have been, you know, just limited or just, eight, uh, just rares. Um, I think there was a few guys in the league that may have uh, may have got above me, to be honest with you. I actually found that a bit as well, Youngie, because, like, see, when I've been on So Rare Data before playing, like, So Rare Data League, like, it's good yeah. fun, like, with the cards I've got, you know, whatever, but when I was playing this community league thing, like, the actual options you've got when you tap into your limiteds as well, for for the majority of users, more and more people are so limited-based now. It was a real game-changer of a, a third-party game, I thought. Oh, definitely. Some lineups I was putting out when I was mixing them together, I was thinking if this was so rare that, you know, on so rare itself, four rewards, like you think this could do damage, this 11 to this 11 players, because you got 300 pool to pick from. Like I said, with fixtures, it was key for me. Massive key for me. Yeah, I thought having the limited available was a big uh, part of why this World League was so popular and why I think it is, is such a, a concept with so much growth. You know, we had our challenges in this first iteration of it. I'm really glad that I got to take part, and I want to see where we go after Christmas is death. Because uh, the, most of the stuff that held us up were kind of technical glitches that somewhat killed the enthusiasm a little bit. But I think there's still plenty of enthusiasm. And uh, congrats to you guys on winning your leagues. By the way, I, I was mid table in Division Three, which uh, I don't know. I, I probably find my level eventually, depending on how we uh, divide things up. I certainly could not compete with Mr. McBride over there, who is the whale of whales. <laughs> And uh, every week on so rare and in any pretty much competition he enters. That's high praise. I like it. So McBride, you stomped a division. You absolutely massacred everyone in your path. How do you feel? Do you feel good about yourself? Can you sleep at night? Um, well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's the main aim every week. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I thought it was good fun. Like I, I like like so rare mega. Sorry, the other side games and stuff, but I thought it was a good bit of extra fun and just kind of shows, I suppose, if you run leagues and things, like the start, there was no guarantee anybody would even win anything or whatever. It was just for banter and, yeah, it was good. And obviously you're playing against different people every week. Um, yeah, it was what Young was saying as well, but using your limited and mixing things together and stuff. Like I thought that was 
pretty good. Like sometimes I was putting out teams, I was thinking, I oh, wish at this guy in um, the sort of real level and things as well, you know. So it's like, so I'm putting out Neymar every week, and I've like, not got a Neymar, and like, like even with my gallery as well, I was kind of wishing like that some of the higher up cards were the limited ones. But yeah, I thought it was great fun to be honest, and it kind of makes you think about fixtures and teams and how you stack together and things. And like usually, I would maybe do that um, before I would pick my own teams as well. So it just gets you into applying like who you think you're going to pick and where you're going to put them and stuff. But I it was it was a good it was a good laugh, and I think. PSG were running right at the start. So that was also a bit helpful. Um I think one week it was just like um it was just pretty mad. Um but translated to a few wins and sorry as well. So that was good. Well having that's... I speak to you quite a lot, McBride, and I know you play like every side game that's going. So um to hear how engaged you were with it, I think it's a testament to how like engaging it was as a game. Sorry, I cut uh... you off there, Trippin. I just wanted to throw that in there. Oh, I, I just want to say McBride mentioned a, a move that, that I learned from you from one of your previous uh, streams or pods or, or I forget where I heard you say it. But when it comes to building lineups, the thing to do is build that SO11 first is yeah. to go into the so rare data leagues or now in the world league and build your SO11 because it really shows you everyone you've got at your disposal. And it really helps me build my SO5s later to build SO11 first. So it's interesting that McBride, you, you found the same thing. It's kind of a, yeah. a, an advantage day in the world is so rare that helps out a lot yeah no i thought it was good definitely i mean like obviously you're the big thing where you're picking 11 um guys is you could go with like different strategies you pick like if you wanted to, I, I could pick a full celtic team if i wanted but i know over a course of a league that you're going to get a few bad results that's going to kill you so sometimes i'd be going for maybe three or four guys per team many stacks and stuff and just looking at fixtures and things who's good really sort of favourable fixtures and obviously now it wasn't available then but sorry our data now I've got like a, a optimal lineup picker for those SO5s I was having a bit of a mess about with that today and put, clicking it and looking at my lineups and how different they were and so no, maybe should, you know so that's quite interesting especially if you're going to prior, prioritise divisions because I just went into like all-star all-star limited under 23s and just picked it and thought like who do they think are my five optimal guys this week and some of them are similar and some of them are different so I find all that stuff actually pretty interesting I always end up doing a couple of drafts in my teams so like pick one earlier on the week and then kind of mix it up or change it from there as you get the news and stuff but I, I thought it was good like honestly like it's loads of good reaction on Twitter loads of people messaging about it and um, bit of banter people looking at scores and stuff and that's like kind of pretty much everything that we we do with Sora really so it's good yeah having that league table and that win loss record even though we couldn't get it right away on on uh on so rare data itself but zarky poo the mvp of world league season one came through with the uh the data yeah, that's, that, that's the one thing we're missing in so rare the game itself like you can win prizes and there's a leaderboard and you get first and you can track like your your wins and things like that but there's none of that. They don't bring in the bragging rights as hard as as much as like this does with the league table, the banter, like you said, and and yeah. that's why there's so much uh, place like only can go up from here. We also found out that um, when you set up private Twitter groups, there's a few people that are blocked each other because you can. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I couldn't add them. I didn't know what was going on. So. Um, yeah, there was a few of those over the uh, course of the 10 I weeks. But... Then, but, um, <laughs> yeah, I know McBride, McBride had one early on, but I think he, uh, um, he, changed, his, he changed his mind. So. Um, I was in a ruthless mood that day. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it, like I say, I, I think from here, it, it'd be interesting to hear Young and McBride what, what they think would be, a, you know, I've, I've got it in my head and I've discussed it with you two before, like, yeah, great, Division 1 to 15 or Division 30 or whatever, but I think realistically um, you want it maybe a shorter, shorter version, so Divisions 1 to 4 based on managers. And I know, Quinny, you sort of get excited about the idea of Champions League following. Yeah. If you finish top three, your Champions League, sort of middle three, whatever, Europa League, etc. So almost it runs over a season, um, but... There's two parts to it. So the first part's a league and the second part's kind of a cup competition. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I've spoken about maybe is it possible to increase the number of teams in a league? That would certainly make things easier. Um, maybe to 12 or 16. But 
yeah, it's just like I say, getting some fresh ideas from different managers helps. Um, so I don't know what Youngie thinks might be a, a change. Um, well, I, I joined it. We, when we first joined, we didn't actually know what we were signing up for. We seen the World League. I actually joined late, hence the Division 12, because I thought I'm the sort of person who generally forgets the side games unintentionally. Um, but with, you know, my own work, business, three kids, sometimes I'm the so I generally forget like so rare mega and things. So I originally was like, I'm not going to join this because I'll always just forget and I'll be a DMP. But then I got obviously the FOMO, uh, joined up. And then when I come into Division 12, I thought, well, fine, Division 12, let's, uh, let's go from the bottom and work our way up. So to be honest, I, I was happy just to try and build my way through and and uh, really sort of find where where my where, where my line was going to be, so to speak. When you look, what I found interesting is when I looked at the, the, the team I was up against or the teams I was up against, I could be playing a 70th gallery. I could be playing a 2 East gallery. You know, I was playing so many variations. And to like come top of a league that has galleries like that in it surprised me, which shows me that when you do set up the new league, you can't even set it up just by gallery value because that doesn't doesn't mean anything, anything really. Like I was saying before, like you you, you know you what would tennis buy you on premium champion premium in the twenty threes? Not not a lot in comparison. So I really I really find it hard how you're gonna set the leagues up now. Certainly with 400, 450 people into 16, 20 man leagues, four four leagues, it, it, it's it's interesting. I like I'm happy to jump in wherever. Of course, I doesn't I doesn't bother me. But um, but yeah, in terms of an idea of how to do it, until you've got the full numbers and the full regions, um, I'm not completely sure how you how you, how best to go about it. To be honest, I don't think anyone actually uh, complained or was too negative about the way it was done originally. Sort of, you just got put in a league when you signed up. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think there was anyone that said, "Oh, it shouldn't be done like that." So, yeah, that that can be done again. Like I say, I'll, when I have a look at the. Um, I think it's like hard. what Youngie said there, like, and sorry, I interrupted you, Dad, but I think, like, if you, I, it has one of these things that people are quite easy on opening, you know, where you're kind of placed at random or whatever. And then, like you say, when people are joining late, if it, originally, you know, there's 450, 500 people, and then from day one, it's all sliced up and then randomed out, you know, a couple of regions per, a couple of divisions per region, whatever. Then if there's an extended kind of registration period for anyone beyond that, then they just get put in at the bottom because it is just first come, first served at that point, you know? Yeah. Do you, have any, does. Say again? Do you have any numbers for what you, the European, you know, if you're saying about 400, 450, is there a rough idea? Are we talking 100? No, without looking, without looking, it would be um, heavily Europe. Um, yeah. And then America and Australia probably surprised me the most. Um that sort of area uh there were a couple of flags i I didn't recognize so i'm sure um i'll go through them and add them in but you know america and europe definitely first america sort of second um but yeah i'll I'll, uh it would be interesting to see what that is because i'll say i'm i've seen a number somewhere before saying there's players in so many different countries um i'll tell you what was definitely more popular this time was france um Lots of French managers registered and uh, Germany as well. So, nice. yeah. We'll split, Europe, uh, we'll split Europe up then. <laughs> yeah, so I think that was, so that, yeah, that was it. I think it would probably be uh, the UK would have to have its own division um, or league and then you split Europe sort of maybe East and West. Um, but yeah, I would say that's definitely where um, most managers are that have sort of gone for it in the UK, but I suppose that maybe because of me and where I'm based, you know, I don't know. Yeah, um, dual nationality passports out, won't they? They don't get into one league, they'll be trying to get into another. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that, that's what I say. Europe split into two, UK, Americas, uh, maybe Asia, Australia, and, and then the rest of the world one. Um, but yeah, ideally, one of the platforms would just take it off us and do it properly and, I can just be one of the players. Um, I think that's key, though, because like we were saying about the league table, and you know, and that's where people sort of disengaged a little bit um, because it was the bragging rights. But things come and go so fast on so rare data, where you can see you can see what's going on as it's happening. Um, but as soon as that week's over, you've missed it. Like to the point of if you miss your last game, you're actually like, I don't know if I won or lost. It, it was so quick yeah. to come and go. Yeah. So where you are looking at other side games, um, you know, where you have a league table that you can just see it as it is, other people's scores, 
how other people are doing. It's just it'd just be nice to have a page that you could go to that that does it, and that you can also screenshot, pull it on Twitter. That is your bragging right. So I met so many people along the way, people I had never spoke to before from the Division Twelve, and that you could just have a chat with, have your own little laugh with. Uh, remind them to put lineups out because the point is you don't want to go up against a DMP lineup. It's not what it's about. Uh, so I was, you know, there was a, yeah. a game against yeah. the is it Trendsev Trader? The, he's Australian. Oh, and he's been doing well recently. Yeah, I I'd been speaking to him for years. I bought my first ever keeper off him back in you know early 2021. So when he was in the league, I was looking forward to that game, and he forgot to set his lineup. Gutted. That's the game that I, you know what I mean, that I was uh, looking to go against. So it'd be lovely to be able to see you know, a page that you could go to to see how all the visions are getting on, how the live scores, as they're happening, you know, that that would literally set set the ball rolling even more, I think. And then when it comes to Twitter and, and interaction on Twitter and tagging on Twitter, I just think it would really, really push it on. Totally agree. Yeah, get as, much, get as many people involved as possible if it's feasible. But yeah, I think like, Maybe one of the main things that sort of are focusing just now, maybe on like the academy and getting people through and building them up and progression and tournaments and all that sort of stuff. But kind of surprised that they don't have an in game function for creating leagues because if people come into the, the game and they're, they're in the academy or whatever and they're, they've got their, their friends there or they refer somebody, then having a wee mini league or whatever there, even if it was just between them, would, would probably be good. Um, but yeah, I mean, just try and get as many people involved as possible. And then how you divide it up or whatever, well, you know, as, as long as um, people get to play against somebody, like the, the country's one sounds quite good, to be honest. Like, if that's where you want to divide it up, but some way you're going to have to divide it up if you've not got a formal ranking system. So, yeah, sounds quite fun. And that, that's it. It's all about having a bit of fun with it, really. So. Yeah. Uh, great. It's the community that with it. I said it's all about the community. And when this come out and the interaction straight from the start, and um, you didn't realize actually how fun it was going to be. Like I said, one of the first lineups I would set was my World Data League. And that was surprising to me because I said I wasn't originally going to join. But as soon as the it all came into motion, I would said I'd message Quinny saying, When's when's the rest of the videos coming out? Because it, yeah. it was something I, I was I was interested to see it. I wanted to see it. I wanted to hear how the other divisions was going. And this is from someone I said, I've been on nearly two years and side games haven't been my top priority, but this has brought side games back in massively for me. Yeah. I know um, I messaged Trip about um, making this part of his show on uh, So Rare TV. Um, yeah. So I'll leave you to work out that how, and then maybe we just, the results go on yours and then we do a, one of these every other week or something with Quinny. Um, and just get different managers in and things like that. But that's part of what I'm looking forward to the most. You know, like right at the beginning of this World League thing, like um, I went full ham on Mark Patrick Rare when I was against him, pure egging it up and all that, and really trying to push the boat out for it. And I think the the lack of that, the stuff we were, you guys were chatting about before in terms of you know the actual final result, never mind the table. You know, the lack of that is really then if I want to quickly scoop at something and go, oh, you know, who am I playing and what this, it's just wasn't on, and it just makes it really hard to like. Mm-hmm. Let yourself completely enjoy it, if you know what I mean, because you're just kind of like, uh, am I going to be in this boat again next week when you pick the team kind of thing? And I missed it once because just forgetting, because that's the kind of path you kind of get into. But that like, everyone proper enjoyed it, you know, for, you know, round one for what, for what it was. And you were saying there, Daz, earlier, that also like, hopefully like when these platforms, when the side game guys are going to come and, uh, you know, host it properly and give it the, the proper in-house treatment. And, you know, I think there's been a few wee kind of chats and a few wee kind of discussions around that already. Do we have anything that the people at home yeah. might be excited to know about? I don't know. No, no, no I wouldn't no. say anything changes just yet. But, no yeah, teasers. no, like I say, I think that even the main site itself, well, you know, it, to me, it's a, yeah. a fairly simple idea. There's far more intelligent people that are working there that know about this sort of technology stuff than I do. So... I don't know why it can be set up pretty quickly and um, yeah it just adds to them and like you say you're not then uh, you're picking your team to win a match against somebody else rather than hoping you're going to finish first or top 100 or whatever um, against 10,000 people so uh, it gives you that that long long term chance of uh, winning something if, if someone chucks in a free reward um, but yeah, I know Trip said before about 
the promotion and relegation. That's something the American sort of sports community don't get. Um, so don't get yeah. to enjoy their day to day life is probably <laughs> what Trippin would say. Once it becomes more vital, like I think we have like the core concept of like a really great idea here. We all agree. We all see the vision for what a promotion relegation league table like system could be in the context of sober. We just need to like figure out a way to execute it better. But once it becomes vital, then it's like, okay, if this is something you're making one of your top things you do every week, like you said, youngie, like maybe you look to who your opponent is and you contact them and say, hey, let's bet a card. Let's each put a card up on our matchup this week, and and you get, you know in your head to head, it's like if you really believe, if you really want to put your money where your mouth is, you know, like you you kind of have to use the honor system to enforce that. I don't think it, it wouldn't be an automatic thing; it'd be kind of offline. But like that's where this could go. Like you can really put some stakes onto your head to head matchups, which I think is is a, a place where SoRare can grow for sure. That's what happens in FPL as well, and so like, obviously FPLs people maybe. Uh, say there's 8 million users or whatever and then like 5 or 6 weeks in whoever's not started well a lot of people fall away but a lot of people do like mini leagues and stuff and they'll maybe say like well like chuck in a 10 or each or whatever and we'll, we'll just do it ourselves I know obviously in so rare they're always keen to say it's not gambling and there's you not know, stand to lose anything but um, just having that kind of um, option of the fun element of it um, or that, that, that sounds quite good to be honest and even with this like a lot of people like came together and said, right, we'll all like donate some cards just for, to say thanks for the enjoyment and things of it as well. So like at least some people have won some stuff as well. So it's, it's, it's worked really well, you know, um, even though there's no guarantee that you would win anything at the start, everybody was still really keen to get involved and just have a bit of, bit of banter with it. Just to play. Yeah. Think how much air though, if there was a card on the line, like <laughs> if you lose yeah. this head to head, you opponent one of your cards I, I just think that that just like blows my mind. well does us had to cut and run and that's going to be all we've got for this episode don't forget to catch division 12 champion youngie you can find him on twitter at fi underscore youngie just as it's kind of spelled on screen and thanks again to everyone's favorite whale the scottish whale mcbride joining us again good to see you, my man as always at mcbride ace on twitter and all places so rare of course oh, what wait. division was you on mcbride sorry uh, one division one of course it was <laughs> <laughs> heavyweight champion of the world McBride <laughs> the highest points in all the divisions as well um, might be wrong but I'm pretty sure I did so uh, high scorer th- th- thanks to slaughter um, everyone yes <laughs> <laughs> and tripping pleasure as always my man thanks for making it